Yeah. Hi. Good morning, sis. Good morning, our beautiful family. Good morning, everybody. All right. Um, today's lesson is, I believe it's the first time that the course really takes on directly or Jesus takes on directly the um, idea of death. Um, and there's so much resistance, the ego really deeply resists this. Um, and the way that it has tried to pull off its resistance is that it has actually duped us into all believing that death is natural and inevitable part of life. and legitimate and legitimate and that highly legitimate even more legitimate than god himself that's right yeah. yes yeah. so trustworthy and um so that's our consensus so we don't ever look at it it's mm -hmm. never even challenged even the sages and mystics and awakened beings in the dream don't test these waters, which is curious because Jesus came and his greatest teaching was through the resurrection that there is no death. And he's asking us to do the same. The time actually is now in this incarnation. Otherwise, you would not be on the Kareen and Nook wagon train who are following the end of death teachings. <laughs> There's no accident that you're here. And so we take that if these teachings are literal, and Nook and I both know that they are because we've experienced the profound, even instantaneous healings that come, um, if these are just lesser forms of the first illusion of death, then it's all literal. Uh, the entire gap, which is the tombstone and all of its contents, all of it is unreal. Even the container is unreal, which is death. And so this is really helpful to see you guys that this idea of separation from God, who is life, well, the opposite to life is death. And so the whole ego dream is one big container of the first idea that life could have an opposite. So into death, the sleeping mind, as soon as the sleeping mind fell asleep, you know, we're dreaming death because there's no life there. There's nothing going on. And so within the death dream, bodies seem to be given birth and the story of mythical me arises and, you know, and, and all the layers and how we get caught into the rings of the outer world. But nothing true is actually occurring because if it's not occurring in God, it's not happening at all. And God cannot be pulled into the gap try as we may to spiritualize the gap, it's nothing. It's not taking place in the realm of the real. So our choice is always between truth and illusions. So to see that whatever's arising, this figure and everything within it, your relationships, your jobs, what you do, I, I know this is a tough one. It's the ego's resistance that makes it a tough one. But it's all serving the greater goal of death. Everything we use in the gap is to distract our minds so that we are moving across a horizontal timeline to become to serve the ego's laws. And what is that law that says you're born and you'll go through certain time cycles and the body will inevitably age? And let's not even call it age anymore. It's not aging. It's decaying. Mm. Let's call it what it is. The body decays and then it dies. And those are the ego's laws. And they're murderous. And they're not kind. And there's nothing true about them. There's nothing good in them. We don't want that. We want to awaken back to life eternal, which is what we are in truth. What you are cannot die because it's never been born into the gap. That's the dream. Okay. So we are going to take a deep dive around this belief of death. It's not true. We're going to talk about it in this lesson. Um, and then, what is this lesson, sis? <laughs> we haven't mentioned it yet. Sorry. Lesson, lesson 163. 163, 163 yes. entitled There is no death. Yes. That's the one. The there is no Son death. of God is free. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And so before we do that, do you want to unpack that, that diagram that we have real quick and then at the end maybe talk about the blogs or the book? Yeah, I think so because we're gonna. I mean, we're. 
This is the greatest blasphemy of all time, quite literally here, is, is what Jesus is saying, which is there is no death. The Son of God is free, not metaphorically, but literally. So, you know, it's like, don't tell me there's no death. God damn it. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's share my screen let's... really quick with all of you. And there it is. Okay, okay, I can't see a thing. Why is that? Really? Well, uh, am I on Zoom? Oh, yes, now I can. Okay. <laughs> still here i don't even know where i am <laughs> can you see it now i can i can see it which means our beautiful family will be able to see the diagram okay great okay. all right everybody so briefly let's concentrate first on the center circle don't get caught up in anything else right now but let's focus together on the center part and this is the ego world or, the, or you can also think of it as the gap okay Mm -hmm. And this is uh, lifetimes of mythical me's. Notice that this idea of uh, a dream and separation is enclosed by the ego's dream of death, which we all call, you know, natural and inevitable. But actually, this is only a belief that protects us from making contact with the light that we are. And should we ever actually hear or feel the love of God? and uh, or, or make contact with the light, this idea of mythical me would dissolve. So we use this realm, this ring, the dream of death to protect mythical me. And the way that we do that is this little right here, this little swirl, it stands for the recycle program. Okay, so here is life as mythical me. And then that mythical me inevitably naturally dies, right? and then recycles back into into another life into the ego's dream so we have never experienced anything beyond this okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. can i just four. say that yes this thank you but sorry to interrupt you i yeah. just want to say there that sure. when we re-enter this is so important mm. when remembering that this is all illusion this is all illusion it's all in the illusory time and space line, the, the linear time and space, right? Um, but we, we have to look at the pattern because it needs to be healed, it needs to be purified. There's an idea, as soon as we really do believe we are a body, as soon as we really do believe that the body has power over our mind that made it, yes, we've reversed true effect and cause there, right? And uh, we are going to be uh, duped into this recycle program that is an illusion, but it's, it is responsible for perpetuating the timeline. That's what's responsible for it, right? Yeah. And when we come in, every time we come in through what seems like human birth, we come in with amnesia of our singular purpose, which is to awaken from the idea that we're separate and uh, that we're a body. And yet the opposite thing happens, right, sis? The opposite, yes. what happens is that we're not born <laughs> into parents who are ascended masters. No. <laughs> right. Uh, right. And so <clears throat> we're born usually to parents with egos who, egos. Yeah. who groom us to be super egos as well right. and they teach us about special relationships they say that's the love you've got to seek and before we know it we're also um decaying and dying again before we remember <laughs> what our true purpose is which is to awaken from the whole damn thing yeah isn't that something the ego's dream about establish yourself come out and be separate you know pursue your goals become a really awesome mythical me and it's only at the time that we've attained the world's um promises of happiness that we realize it's a fraud and how much time has gone by by the time we've achieved and then go i've been duped 
And then it's like, oh man, right? There must be a better way. And so the prodigal son starts the, the trip back home. But anyway, so this is the ego's plan to have us all die under its laws before we awaken to, hey, that's not me. <laughs> Uh, so this, this, uh, path here, Jesus has showed, has shown us and has done it for us from the ego's world was crucified, seemed we all, all that were there believed that he was dead in the tomb three days, right? Um, resurrects into what? A real world dream. This is where there is the, we seem to still be in the dream, yet there is no death. There's no sickness, no pain, no suffering, because you're experiencing directly the joy, the peace of love of God. There's no separation, so there's no fear or guilt in the mind. It's also a status of complete dominion over the world. So you're walking as Jesus walked, right? And then at, then Jesus took uh, God took the final step where Jesus ascended. And he's looking for those who will awaken through the dream of death, to be in the real world, to help the sonship all awaken to this status so that God takes the final step. So he's done it. He's our example. He's the way shower. And now it's up to us by accepting that he's done it for us and we are one with him. That's accepting the atonement. And we're really accepting that. It's seemingly in increments, right? Because we're so terrified of God's love yet. Yes. Um, but we're accepting that every time we we uh, accept the atonement. Yeah, I was going to say okay. something, and I forgot. Um, okay, um, there's just so much in this. Yes. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll get back to it. I'll get back okay. to it. Okay, let's just take yeah. a, just just pause for a second because I don't want to jump off of this. If yeah, this is big. Thank you, thank you. Um, oh, that's what I wanted to say. Sorry, sis. I wanted to say, see, you know, it, I know in the early days when I was with the course, I used to think that I used to believe, just like most people do, we go home through death. Mm, yes. Right? Thank you. Okay. And um, we, we go home through death. And, and this diagram reveals that we don't go home through death. It's a big one to swallow. It's the biggest one really. We don't go home through death. There's no free pass, mm -hmm. right? right. If, we, if, we, if we have mistakenly believed that the body can take us out, that the body is more powerful than the mind, our mind that made it, that projected it, if we still mistakenly believe that it can de decay and die, um, we're going to be coming back in this cycle again. But unfortunately, like I said before, we come back as a, a small child with amnesia and have to go through the whole cycle all over again. And most I've noticed that most who are attracted, like sincerely attracted to A Course in Miracles pathway, not just intellectually, but experientially, uh, are done. They've hit the wall. Mm -hmm. They've really hit the wall and they go, you know what? I want to get this. I don't want to do this again. I'm done. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can okay. we talk a, a moment? Um, two things that I want to raise. One, to help you think of this diagram in a different way. To think of, you know, like the race, a horse racetrack or the track on a high school field that's, you know, oval. This dream is, um, and the d dream of death is all on that same um track okay so most of it you think is it like in the in the mythical me your mythical me your mythical me and then all of a sudden you die you don't go anywhere the dying and the reincarnation is the same continuum of the same track you're always on the same wheel okay death doesn't take you anywhere else it's not us other realm it's not euphoric it's not ethereal it's not with the angels right it's the same it wants you to think you've entered a portal into something else that you know we rest in peace so i'm with the i'm with god now no 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 that's we're being duped it's one and the same and it's a revolving door and you have to the only way out of it is up it's through life life yeah. it's through life getting it's out choosing of it. life yes and and you know there's there's a terror that comes up 
<clears throat> I'm hearing it, feeling it. Okay, yeah. There's a terror that comes up through the ego that says, well, how the hell do I get out of life if there's no death? Mm -hmm. The exit. Well, no, it, as Jesus explains in the manual for teachers and in the psychotherapy pamphlet, I think it is, or the song of prayer, sorry, song of prayer. Um, yeah, uh, there is, <clears throat> there, when we come in the vertical and when we're living these teachings and as we travel through the six stages of awakening or the six stages of de development of trust, which is in the manual for teachers, what we're going to find is we're going to reach a point where we choose with Holy Spirit when to lay our body aside, mm -hmm. all right? But we do not lay the body aside uh, if it's been hurt or if it's aging and decaying or if it's, um, if it's sick. That's mm -hmm. not how we lay the body aside. Jesus is adamant that we lay the body aside in perfect health. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're going to be still teaching attack to everyone else mm -hmm. that they're guilty and to ourselves as well. So you're, you're, you're pointing to the repurposing of the body. So while we use the body for separation and Thank attack, you. which is what we originally came in for, separation, um, that at any point we are free to stop, forgive ourselves for thinking that this was me and saying, okay, take this image and I'm giving it to you, Holy Spirit, to repurpose. And I no longer am going to use it to separate from my brothers, but I'm going to use it only as a communication device to heal the sonship, to bring the son of God back into the remembrance that we are one. So then the body becomes holy and healthy, and it's now put in function and service to the will of God. And so that's what Sis is pointing to. Then we will be in our function and the body can't be sick, can't can't decay, and it cannot die because it's holy. It's being it's being used in service to God directly. And then there's a decision made at that point when you are so not identified with this body, you know that you are at home with God and that the body is a speaker box, and that whether that thing seems to be moving along the horizontal timeline or it's been buried, it does not matter to you because you are not that. So the decision to lay the body aside will bring no fear to you because you will be, you have will have completed the positive separation that we point to, knowing that I was never mythical me, but always the Christ, that the separation did not occur. So therefore there's been no mythical me at all. Um, and I something for myself along this journey, you guys, and this is coming up. I think everybody I could say has a thing in the dream, something that causes you extreme anxiety, some core root that the ego holds in your thought that brings you terror. But what I'm, what I've discovered for myself and mine was called the special relationship. What I have seen recently, and it was pretty mind blowing was that the, the surge and the pull to look at, the, at it and try to fix it or I don't deal with it is actually the smoke screen. The thing that causes you the most angst has some, some distraction, decoy, and you think that that's it. But what's behind it is the attraction to death because it keeps you focused on something in the dream so that while you're focused in it and it's handling you, that you're old, getting older and distracted and miserable and not in your function and the body gets old and dies. So it's never been about the special relationship. I was using the special relationship as a means to protect the underlying attraction, which was this pull into death. That's what the mythical me wants. It wants death. It wants to preserve itself through death, it wants the reincarnation cycle. It, it would rather say to God, I will die as mythical me rather than surrender to what I truly am and rejoin with you. That's the ego's plot. That's mythical me's desire. And it is so flippin' strong. We totally underestimate it. So I'm asking you just to look, to wonder perhaps behind what that problem is in your life, the biggie, 
if that's not serving the God of death that we made. And that's a, that's a deep, deep dive. And if you didn't get it, don't worry about it. But if it shines a light, we'll, we'll all come to this place. Oh, thank you. That's incredibly valuable. Thank you, sis. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. And I know this is going to be a long lesson, guys. That's okay. Uh, we apologize, but it, 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 it's... It deserves the time. It's it it's deserves crucial. the time. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I just want to say one thing before you switch this diagram off. Um, see the black ring? Yeah. That's, that completely imprisons us when we believe we're mythical me living the ego's life. Jesus speaks about that in depth in uh, a manual for, for teachers, in the manual for teachers, uh, and it's section 27, I believe. And in there, he says that that black ring, the ego's dream of death that we all believe mistakenly is inevitable, natural and legitimate, is the central dream in the ego thought system. It's the central dream from which all other illusions stem. That's how massive mm -hmm. this whole thing is. And that's why not many who began A Course in Miracles uh, and uh, even teaching A Course in Miracles in the first four or five decades really would allow, not, in fact, I don't know any teacher who would have, uh, who allowed this to see, to really sink in deeply and unpack this. Yeah. So the dream of death is a central dream from which Every other illusion stems from that. That's why we need to see it. These teachings that Jesus is bringing in through A Course in Miracles are very different than any other teaching on the planet today. It doesn't, de doesn't devalue other teachings, mm -hmm. but it does. Jesus does say that everyone will pass through this doorway of learning at some point. Maybe not this lifetime, maybe in a thousand or a 10,000 lifetimes. Who yeah. cares, right? Uh, but everyone will eventually have to realize this. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, so, sis. Yes. Let's get I think it would be it. helpful even if we had a diagram without anything in it to recognize that the first split out of the mind of God was death. If they only just saw the tombstone, right? Oh, and wow. then from death sprouted death bodies and then death stories and death problems and death illusions. I mean, we need to really see that everything in this realm mm -hmm. serves death mm -hmm. until we repurpose it and say, Holy Spirit, I know I see what I've made and it's all images of decay. Nothing here lasts, right? Nothing here satisfies. Nothing gives me peace. I'm willing to repurpose everything. Take it and let me use it for the awakening. That's the way out. And so, and how graceful is that? Just look upon everything that we made. Let me have the light in my mind. Look upon what I've made and see what's really going on. Let me experience, you know, the truth behind the illusion. Beautiful. It's not hard. It's done for us. We just have the invitation. I don't want to do this anymore. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, because this is, this is, such a humongous subject i'm going to make sure in the description box here the show more box that there are there's a, a few blogs that are part of the end of death volume one book which is called the end of death the deeper teachings of a course in miracles um, these blogs if you want to really unpack this and know more about this subject these blogs will be there. And um, I think there's three or four of them. And there's three. Anyway, whatever, you'll see them. They're down there, right? There's, um, oh, I can't think of the name of it, but there's uh, part one, part two, part three of the something. <laughs> anyway, it's all good. Just it's all this it's horizontal it's stuff is too much for me. The other thing that I want to say is that we have just completed a 20 week course mm -hmm. that unpacks the manual for teachers, mm -hmm. like in depth. Mm -hmm. 
So you can uh, watch the replays of that if you go to our website and I'll feature that in that description box as well for you, all right, on this lesson. You can watch the replays at, at your leisure, all right? Since I keep getting somebody that's very insistent with their question, it's kind of strange, but it's happening. Um, what do you say about those experiences of those who seem to have died and come back and have, you know, euphoria, et cetera? Like what NDEs, about- those? you're talking about near death experience? Yes, yes, there's somebody really not happy right now. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, well, yeah, good, great question. Near death experiences. Um, okay, so while they're not, you know, because we're, we, our mind is so, we've taught ourselves the ego thought system. All right, we taught ourselves that death is heaven. Mm -hmm. Heaven is death. We go home to God through death. Mm -hmm. We've taught ourselves that through the ego. And so there, is such a belief for many of us that death is heaven we go home to heaven that we've actually made a reflection of heaven in those near-death experiences mm -hmm. so there is a, we believe through the ego that everything is going to be granted to us in death mm -hmm. that we couldn't receive or attain in life mm -hmm. So death is salvation. Mm -hmm. And while death is salvation, we're going to be terrified of God. Yeah. With a yeah. fear of God, the fear of love. But so we we have these near-death experiences, and I myself have had something very, very similar mm -hmm. where everything, it's just, it's heaven. Mm -hmm. It's heaven, mm -hmm. but it's a reflection of heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not access to heaven. No. Right? No. So and not, yeah, go on. Yeah, in that moment, right, what, you're in agreement. It's like you're having this moment of a bodiless state mm -hmm. where you understand I'm not in a body. So you're having an expansive understanding, more of an understanding of what you are, mm -hmm. but you haven't transcended that belief in separation. Yeah. So until that gap with God is closed, you're still in this, right? So it's even recycle. Yeah. yeah, you're stuck yeah. in recycle. So for a while in the death realm, you would experience yourself as bodiless, more expansive, more spiritual, like, oh, I'm limitless. <laughs> um, but while that separation is still going, or, the, or even the wish for separation, the thought that separation offers you something that you want, you're, we're stuck in the reincarnation cycle. Yeah. Thank you so much for being yeah. so perceptive and picking that up. It just yeah. proves we're one mind. Yeah, somebody was just really like, um, I don't think so. I disagree. What about this? So, uh, yeah, great question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So lesson, let's read the lesson, shall we? Yeah, yeah. Uh, lesson 163, there is no death. The son of God is free and it's literal. Here we go. Death is a thought that takes on. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a frog in my throat. <clears throat> Not a real frog. Oh, Death wrong. is a thought that takes on many forms, often unrecognized. It may appear as sadness, fear, anxiety, or doubt, as anger, faithlessness, and lack of trust. Concern for bodies, mm -hmm. envy. And all forms in which the wish to be as you are not may come to tempt you. There's the gap, right? The gap diagram. <clears throat> all such thoughts are but reflections of the worshipping of death as saviour and as giver of release. Embodiment of fear, the host of sin, God of the guilty and the Lord of all illusions and deceptions, does the thought of death seem mighty? For it seems to hold all living things within its withered hand, all hopes and wishes in its blighting grasp, all goals perceived but in its sightless eyes. The frail, the helpless and the sick bow down before its image, death. 
thinking it alone is real, inevitable, worthy of their trust. Wow. For it alone will surely come. That's what we we believe this blindly, yes. you know. Yes. Surely death will come before God does. Well, because we believe the physical senses. We believe the mythical me. God is always absent. God's hard to reach. But boy, death, you know, I can see it. My loved one was here. They're gone. Separation is real. Mm. And yet this is what we want to see. This is what we made up in the dream. It has not occurred. It only occurs in a dream, you know, in that gap. But look at all the le lesser um, expressions of death. Let's be radically honest with that. If we're experiencing fear, guilt, depression, right? Yep. Um, lack, any concern for bodies? Are you concerned for your child's body? Uh, sadness, anxiety, doubt, right? Faithlessness, all of those are lesser forms. You've, you've, you're worshiping death, the container, and mm -hmm. all the forms within it lead to it. They bow down and they honor it and you're subscribing to it. So when you're fearful, you're believing death and its illusions. You're in the gap. You're playing the game. Right. And I think the great, not I think, I know the greatest guilt magnet, hmm. death magnet. Yes. Is special relationships and special relating. That's right. Yeah. Because okay. that's what gives us the most hit to think that there's something good in the gap. That's its sweet spot in the gap that says, oh, but this, this has got to be of God because this is too good not to be of God. And you're going to believe that and you're going to serve that relationship in opposition to God, not consciously, but while you think that relationship is, you know, the love of all loves, um, you are going to be serving the, the, the God of death. And it's not until you experience love with a capital L, divine love, that you will look upon and see what you've been using that special relationship for, and you won't want it anymore. But you've got to see the contrast. You have to experience the holy relationship before you'll want to let go um, of the special relationship. And that's why we have the Total Transformation course online. See you there. Mm -hmm. Shameless plug. Sorry. <laughs> it's free, too, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that <was> shameless. <laughs> yeah. But honestly, like until the family came forward and you got to love liberally and love was poured back at you, no matter what you showed up with, you know, it's like, wow, all of a sudden that you experienced real love. And then that shiny spot in the gap mm -hmm. uh, was seen for what it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And it's not just, just for, so this doesn't increase fear for everyone. It's not that we give away our or we let go of our special relationships. <laughs> what we're being asked to do is to transform them. Yeah. Stop okay. using them. Stop the you. Yeah, because all special relationships are relationships of mutual use. Right. The ego's mutual use. We don't want to do that anymore because they're death magnets. Yeah. Yes. Death okay. magnets. I'll keep reading. <clears throat> Here we go. Paragraph three. All things, oh, all things but death. Think about this. Oh, all things but death in this world are seen to be unsure, too quickly lost, however hard to gain, uncertain in their outcome, apt to fail the hopes they once engendered, and to leave the taste of dust and ashes in their wake in place of aspirations and of dreams. Everything, mm -hmm. even everything in the gap, mm -hmm. we see as temporary or, or we see to be as unsure. Yeah, but the one thing we have total faith in, total trust in, is death. That's right. Not God, but death. And God doesn't even know about death. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This is the split mind, right? Okay. That's how we prove that separation is real. Well, if God doesn't know about it and I'm certain that it is, then that makes me separate from God. How can I ever close the gap with God when death is real for me but not for God? Interesting. Oh, wow. Big one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he says, but death is counted on. <laughs> 
for it will come with certain footsteps when the time has come for its arrival. It will never fail to take all life as hostage, hostage to itself. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Would you bow down to idols such as this? Here is the strength and might of God himself, perceived within an idol made of dust. That's right, because we put God's qualities onto <clears throat> death. We do. God is certain. God is ac accountable. God is changeless. God, you know, and, and we call, and when, then we transfer what God is, and we pin it on death, his opposite. So what we've done is we projected death onto God. Yes. Right? Or we made a substitute for God and called it death. Yeah, that's it. Called yeah. it death. Yeah. And that's the ego's God. That's right. Everything wow. serves it. Yep. Time to wake up. Thank you. Oh, now, where the hell was I? Was I? Oh, Sorry. here. No. <clears throat> where am I? Oh, yeah. Here's here God. is the opposite of God. Opposite of God, death. Death is the opposite of God. Here is the opposite of God, proclaimed as Lord of all creation, stronger than God's will for life. The endlessness of love and heaven's perfect, changeless constancy. Right. Here is the will of the Father and of the Son, defeated finally in death and laid to rest beneath the headstone death has placed upon the body of the Holy Son of God. Wow. Unholy in defeat, he has become the Son of God, you, me, he has become what death would have him be. His epitaph, which death itself has written, gives no name to him, for he has passed to dust. It says but this, herein lies a witness that God is dead. Boy, that's where death is a choice and the mythical me triumphantly declares that it has done to God uh, we've overcome life. We've usurped the throne. We have really, really done it. We've taken the place of God. We are more powerful than God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a line in the course where Jesus says that, um, that the ego pursues us mm -hmm. even after death. That's yeah. that mythical me. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. So now next is... Um, Okay, and this it writes again and still again every time death hits somebody, while all the while its worshippers agree and kneeling down with their foreheads to the ground, they whisper fearfully that it is so. So even a grave memorial is a celebration. Yeah, well, read, read what Jesus says, <laughs> the incorruptible body in chapter 17, 19, sorry, in chapter 19 of the obstacles to peace in the text. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. So paragraph six, it says, it is impossible to worship death in any form and still select a few you would not cherish and would yet avoid while still believing in the rest. For death is total. Either all things die or else they live and cannot die. Wow. There you go. There's a positive separation. Either all things die or else they live and cannot die. Can I interject but, really quick? I'm sorry. Can guys. I just say one more thing? Yeah. No compromise is possible. Yeah. Now you can speak. <laughs> so while we are okay with the death of one brother or one if we see death as real anywhere, mm -hmm. we, we make it real for everyone. Even those that we would say we would love to exempt from the law of death are the special loved ones, right? Yeah. And we pray for them to, to be healed or saved from death. But it's like you, if it's real for one, it's real for all. Death is total. I remember seeing all the squashed animals on the roads out here. It's pretty prevalent and um, really like, crying out saying, I want my mind healed around this. 
I think it really is. I feel no pull, but it's like a, the illusion of death on the road still had a trigger for me. And it's like, if that, if that's true, you know, it's true for everything. And it, it's just not. Death is the illusion, no matter where you see it, even with innocent animals, right? Death is unknown in God and God alone is the truth. And we have to ask Holy Spirit in to heal our mind on what we're seeing through yeah. the body's five senses, remembering that the ego is tempting us by sending our senses out there to report back that God is dead. That's it. God is death. That's right. right. The truth is true. God is life, but there's really a dead dog down the street. Yeah. No, you know, one is true and one is not. Which one are we accepting as true? Only one is true. These teachings are the most uncompromising teachings ever in the whole of time and space, the illusion of time and space. So. And, and for the one of you that's going to come back at me and say, well, you know, my dog or my mom or whatever looked very dead to me. Um, I'm with you and I love you. And I'm not saying any of this lightly and I have deep, deep compassion. But what I want to bring to the sonship is the way out. And it's love that's bringing this message in. Remember. That Jesus looked upon Lazarus, who had been in the tomb for four days and whose body stank. Had he agreed with that, right, we wouldn't have recourse. But he looked upon that and knew that there was something real behind it to see. That the presence of God was there where our five physical senses were boasting an opposite. The five physical senses, well, it looks really dead. It feels dead. It smells dead. It's dead. We're all in agreement, it's dead. One stood as the representation of the light in the darkness, looked upon it and said, life is the law of God. God declares life and only life can ever be. Death is the illusion. And he called Lazarus forth. So there is a, a means and a way to, to experience reality right where the image boasts itself. You're looking at the ego's boasting. Now, I was crying, I was looking at a dead deer on a freeway. I remember seeing this very clearly and crying and saying, you know, my gosh, I, I know there's no life and matter, but if Jesus was here, he'd walk right up to that deer and the deer would get up off the freeway and walk on. And I heard very, it wasn't, it wasn't haughty. It was just, and that is the difference between you and the, and Jesus. And it was like, so that's going to be available to us as we purify ourselves, as we unself and really agree, accept the atonement. Mm -hmm. I am the Christ. I am the Christ. I am as God created me. When we deeply accept that, remember, there's nothing in the illusion that can last or remain in our sight. It's like that deer will get up. The dog will rise. The dead will rise, literally. But it's upon how we're seeing it. It's who we think we are that determines what we see. That's it. That's the key. That's it. And you and I both have had experiences of that. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. So while it may seem very real to the physical, please know that everything that Jesus did, instantaneous changing, mm -hmm. proved that all we're seeing, even though it seems so real, is pure illusion even oh, death. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I shall keep reading. Okay. Paragraph six, is that right? No. Yes. Wait a no, minute. No, no, no. Where am I? No. I'm up to sentence number five, paragraph six. For here again, we see an obvious position, which we must accept if we be sane. What contradicts one thought entirely cannot be true, unless its opposite is proven false. The idea of <laughs> the idea of the death of God is so preposterous that even the insane have difficulty in believing it, for it implies that God was once alive and somehow perished, <laughs> killed apparently by those he, who did not want him to survive. Oh man, you got to laugh, all right? Okay, yeah. Their, strong, their stronger will could triumph over his, over God's. And so eternal life then gave way to death. We believe it through the ego, right? Yes. And with the father died the son as well. 
Death worshippers may be afraid, and yet can thoughts like these be fearful? If they saw that it is only this which they believe, they would be instantly released. And you will show them this today. Mm. There is no death, and we renounce it now in, in every form for, for their salvation and our own as well. God made not death. I will say that again. God made not death. Whatever form it takes must therefore be illusion. This the stand we take today, and it is given us to look past death and see the life beyond. Our Father, bless our eyes today. We are your messenger, messengers, and we would look upon the glorious re reflection of your love, which shines in everything. We live and move in you alone. We are not separate from your eternal life. There is no death, for death is not your will. And we abide where you have placed us, in the life we share with you and with all living things, to be like you and part of you forever. We accept your thoughts as ours, and our will is one with yours eternally. Amen. Amen. There is no death, the Son of God, you, is free. Right? Um, that's big, sis. Is everybody okay? <laughs> Maybe. I think we lost everyone. Maybe. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, I, I know we're, we've gone over time, the ego's time, but I am not leaving unless the internet cuts out. I'm not leaving till I've shared some really juicy quotes from A Course in Miracles. Is that okay by you, sis? Of course it is. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Yes. Just share a few here over the next five or six minutes. Jesus says here in chapter three, section seven, the world is not left by death. I'm going to say that again. The world is not left by death, but by truth. And then he says here in the same place, there is no death, but there is a belief in death. Mm -hmm. And that needs to be undone. So we've all heard, well, we've all heard people say when somebody has passed, rest in peace. And we believe, or we have believed, that that is a blessing for the dead to rest in peace. Well, that's a, a blessing from the ego. It's not a blessing from our holy self. Let me just read to you this particular quote from Chapter 8, Section 9, Paragraph 3. All forms of sickness, he means all forms of sickness, even unto death, are physical expressions of the fear of awakening, the fear of God. They are attempts to reinforce sleeping out of fear of waking. This is a pathetic way of trying not to see by rendering the faculties for seeing ineffectual. Rest in peace is a blessing for the living, not the dead, because rest comes from waking, not from sleeping. Death is sleeping. Sleeping is withdrawing. Waking is joining. So Miracles. How do, you get out of this? how do you get out of death? By joining. Sorry? Joining with another to remember, oh, I and my brother are one. And in that memory is the memory of the father. That's the fast. That's, that's the way out of this, to awaken. From separation to union. The experience of union brings you the remembrance of the Father. This is why the ego does not want us to join with each other. 
puts all this interference in between bodies and our stories. They interfere with this happening. And it knows that. And it knows that this is the most threatening thing to the entire gap. The love that is experienced in true union with the brother. No masks, no inauthentic relating, heart to heart. <sighs> That's the overcoming of death. Get it? Love overcomes death. Love overcomes death. Yes. Union overcomes death. Thank you. Beautifully summarized, sis. Yes. Right. Um, miracle, you know, in the chapter one of A Course in Miracles are the 50 miracle principles. And this one, number 24, miracle principle, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. miracle principle number 24, listen to this doozy. Oh. I want to do the happy dance. Okay. <laughs> okay. Miracles enabled you, yes, you, to heal the sick and raise the dead because you made sickness and death yourself and can therefore abolish both. You, yes, you, are a miracle capable of creating in the likeness of your creator. Everything else is your own nightmare and does not exist. Hallelujah. Only the creations of light are real. And if I've got a few more minutes, please, please. Yeah. Um, if death is real for anything, there is no life. If death is real for anything, this is what you were saying before, sis, there is no life. Death denies life. But if there is reality in life, death is denied. No compromise in this is possible, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Now, this one comes from Lesson 167. Have we done that? No. Where are we? Oh, oh, we're jumping the gun. Who cares? I don't give a damn. Death cannot come from life. Death cannot come from from life. In other words, life cannot lead to death. No. Only death can lead to death. Right. Yeah, so if we think we're living and the death is the inevitable outcome of life, then we're really living death. Or we think, we think we've usurped God as life and that we can give life through bodies and through babies and that, oh, here's life. Well, you know, and then the end of that life is death, right? So um, life, God, capital L, life, there is no death in life. Life, uh, God is spirit. So there's no no um, birth and decay and death process in God, and that's where we actually have our existence. That's what she's. That's what that's pointing to. And I love that he said back a couple that you said death is only a belief, and we have the power because we are the miracle to create like God, which is life. We have the ability to look upon illusions. And, and know and raise life in the place of the belief of death. When you recognize overcoming death is nothing more than overcoming a false belief, now it's doable. Thank you, sis. A mm -hmm. yep. mm. um, couple more quotes here. The body neither lives nor dies because it cannot contain you who are life. If we share the same mind, remember this is Jesus speaking, if we share the same mind, <laughs> you can overcome death because I did. Death is an attempt to resolve conflict by not deciding at all. Like any other impossible solution the ego attempts, it will not work. That's why we have to do the illusion of the recycle program and the amnesia again, right? And then this one, um, those who fear death, and we all do, we defend ourselves from death here in the dream because we have an attraction to death through the ego. Those who fear death see not how often and how loudly they call to it and bid it to come save them from communication, from union with our brothers, sisters and God. For death is seen as safety. It's seen as safety. The great dark saviour from the light of truth, the answer to the answer with a capital A, 
the silencer of the voice that speaks for God. Yet the retreat to death is not the end of conflict. Only God's answer is its end. And this one here, there is no death because the living share the function their creator gave to them. Life's function cannot be to die. It must be life's extension that it be one as one forever and forever without end. Okay. I think that's probably enough. Yeah. I think if we take some of those and piecemeal them out and the next time we have a lesson on death to bring in a few of those, not all of them, but just a couple here and a couple there, I think it'll be more impactful. Yes. I'm yes. hoping that people are still able to just digest the, um, the diagram and what's been given here. Yeah. It's a, it's a biggie. There's so much resistance. So please um, take what was given and what you're willing to accept at this point. No judgment. Don't have to get it all right now. It's happening organically. We're traveling together. This is the first time we've talked about it. Just let it sit. Ask Holy Spirit to, you know, help it anchor in you and trust that the mythical me has no part of this, the answer. It can't do anything. The I know mind employed isn't going to do it. It's going to be a revelation. Uh, from the one shared mind to your awareness. So rest, rest in this. Beautifully said. Thank you, sis. Thank you. And thank you, beautiful family, for at least being willing yes. to have an open mind about this. Because this is the reversal of the entire ego's thought system. It all rests on our belief that death is the inevitable natural and legitimate end of life which means god is dead okay so thank you for staying with us this long yeah. and for having an open mind that's all you need is just to have an open mind yes thank you and if so you, much. you need to express mm -hmm. uh when i first heard about this i had to express uh which i did through journaling express all my fears about having my exit door ripped off me death mm -hmm. I mean you know because I hated my body for decades and I was like oh shit now what am I gonna do if you're gonna rip the whole idea of death off me how am I gonna be how am I gonna get out of this body mm -hmm. that was horrendous yeah. yeah there's the attraction to death too right there yeah. it's so strong yeah. yeah yeah all right we love you we're walking yeah. with you thank we're, you so much for holding your hands guys Big hug, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, sis, too. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Thank Thanks. you.